I don't know why I have a hat on. I'm running out of ideas here, okay? Hey, I'm walking here! I'm walking here! So today we're gonna look at some programming puzzlers. What is a puzzler? It is a piece of code that upon looking at it, you'd think that it does something and you'd expect it to do something, but turns out it does something completely opposite or something not included in the list of things that you would expect. It puzzles you. Why does it do this? We'll find out in this video. We're gonna take a look at a couple of these puzzlers. This man right here seems to be the master of them. He poses uh, these puzzlers in a presentation he has at every Kotlin conference. So this is from the 2018 conference. Uh, the 2023 conference is coming up. I'm gonna be there. I hope he's there and he has a presentation like this one. I really think they're interesting. They're worth your time to dig deep into them, find out why they do what they do. So let's do that right here, right now. Let's go. So the first one, it's a function called hello, returns a boolean. What it does, it prints the result of comparing print hello, print world, and return false. The first thing I think of here is what in the world is return false doing there? I don't know. And can you compare it with other things like print world? So here we have the function written out and at the end, of course, he calls the function. Running this file should produce what? Hello world false. Okay. Why? How? Let's see why. I don't know why. So I'm going to jump to the REPL and what I'm going to do first is I want to know What's happening here in the print hello? What if I store it, for example, somewhere? Let's say hello is equal to print hello. I am storing it in a variable. Okay, it actually prints the thing and then it stores. I don't know about the order, but it, there is a printing happening here. So that's going to happen as well for uh, print world. And if I say, um, print ln the value of hello what is hello exactly it's a unit okay so this is a unit as well print world so comparing a unit with a unit is going to be equal fine but what about this part return to whatever is equal to return you can't do that it's not allowed so how is he comparing what if we remove this from the function and then run it Again, mm, return expression required in a function with a block body. Yes, this is a function with a block body. So you must return somewhere. Okay, so I gather apparently it is printing the first one. It, it's printing print hello. It's printing obviously print world. And then this return false is, is executing. And its result comes back to this print ln. You know why? Let's run it one more time and see why. It's because it's, it's, it's writing a new line. So if I were to go and say uh, print, not print ln, save this, run it again. Damn it. Okay, well, I'm not sure about that last part, but I think this, this false is returning to the println function here, and that's being printed after these two are being printed. So you get hello world false. So we're going to go with answer B. Let's see how it actually runs on his end. He is using Kotlin 1.3 and we are using 1.7. Yes, 1.7 on the REPL actually, uh, not the, not the compiler, because if you do, uh, so 1.8 for the compiler. So let's now start, run the program. Drum roll and it's hello world. So who, who wants to explain? Thanks. So the, the print hello returns unit, but. Okay, returns unit, but first it prints. It prints, so that goes on to standard out. Then uh, the print world uh, is evaluated and it prints to standard out and it also returns unit and they both mm -hmm. equal each other, so it's true. Yeah. And then it evaluates the third one because they're all true, so it needs to check third part but as soon as you hit the return it returns up to the hello function so nothing else gets executed okay 
But he's gonna ask now, why can you write the return false in that area anyway? Can I write it here at all? Uh, I guess, I, I think that, well, the, you're, you're still evaluating an expression, right? Because return is still an expression. Yeah, well, what's, what's the return type of return expression? <laughs> the return type of return as an expression is nothing. It returns nothing. Also break, also continue. This is from the docs. Great. That we know now. Well, you're returning a Boolean, right? Uh, but I guess return returns nothing. I thought, I thought you need to know it. <laughs> So uh, the thing is that uh, everything is an expression in Kotlin, except for assignment, which is an expression in other languages, but not in Kotlin. So uh, return, actually, the return type of return expression is nothing. Mm. And nothing it can be assigned to anything, basically to Boolean as well. That's why you, you can make this code compile. But of course, this return returns from the function earlier than uh, the second equal uh, uh, operator equality. OK, so, so since return returns nothing, it can according to the compiler, sit in the place of where something needs to be a boolean. So nothing can be assigned to anything. So return false in itself is nothing. It, the, the return type is going to be nothing. But that can sit inside of a boolean instead of a boolean. So you can compile it. But by the time you run it, it's going to return. It's not going to uh, end up as an equality. That's in Kotlin 1.3. That's not what we saw. We saw hello world false. You can execute it, and that's why we get only hello world, then return. But if the program would continue, only then uh, this, the outer print would be executed. It does continue now. That's, uh, that's strange. But it's not. OK, so that's that. That's for the first one. That was enjoyable. Are you enjoying yourself? I know I am. Look at my face. You can tell. What's that I hear you say? You would like to do another one? You got it. Let's do another one. This one seems much simpler. Simpler to read. Function called f takes a value x, a boolean, and then it compares. When x is true, you print the value of x and true. When x is false, you print the value of x and then false. And then he calls it with true and then false. What is it going to print? Okay, you go into the function, x is true, you compare with x equal true. x is equal to true the first time, and then it's going to print true, true. Cool. Then x becomes false, x is equal to false, yes. It's going to print false, false. Okay, so we're going to go with answer A. Seems like it. That's what I would guess from looking at it the first time. Let's see what the answer actually is. So let's get it running. And uh, option B is correct, so. Okay, so it's option B. Why is that? Okay, let's jump over to the code and see what's happening. When you place X into these parentheses, it's then going to compare with the final value of what this ends up being. So this is gonna be true the first time. When you pass in true, x is true, the actual value of x is true, you get the first branch. The second time around, x is false. Is x equal true in, in that instance when x is false? No, it's not. So that's a false here. You got a false here, right? And x is false as well. So what it's going to do is compare your false to the final value of this equality which is also false, those are equal. So you get the first branch as well. That's what happened. So this is very confusing. You don't write code like this. My proof is the fact that he's running this without any warnings is because he himself turned off the warnings from the compiler so that the audience wouldn't have any hints about what's going on. But if you attempt to run this, you're not going to go get away with this. First of all, they're not just warnings. This is Kotlin 1.3 he's working with. This is Kotlin 1.8. These are errors. First of all, you have to have an else. Second of all, you can't just have, look at what it says. The logical expressions may be understood ambiguously when the subject branches. Please wrap it with parentheses. So this is not gonna go. But let's say we want to keep assuming that we want to run this confusing code. What you need to do to get rid of the errors is just wrap this inside parentheses. Now it's super clear 
that this whole equality right here is a whole value. So now it's clear what's going to happen. When x is false and this statement turns out to be either true or false, that's what's going to be compared. The parentheses add the, the, uh, the indication that this guy is one thing. It's not no longer indicating that Oh, let's compare x, x with true and, and, you know, because that's what the when is doing. It's not what this branch is doing. This branch is just going to produce one value. Now it's clear and you need to have an else. So now if you run it, you're going to get the same as he did. So don't do this in your code, please. Okay, one more. This one is interesting, nice, funny. I like this one. So val x is a nullable integer with a value of 2. Val y is a normal integer with a value of 3. Val sum is x Elvis operator 0 plus y. Elvis operator, we'll explain it in a second. Print the value of sum. What's it gonna print? So you got 2, you got 3. Yeah, I would say 5 because uh, x is 2. It's not null. So 0 is not gonna be used. Plus y which is 3 that's 5 what's it gonna print so i guess the thing is that many people have run into this pro problem already it's 2 okay let's let's see what this elvis operator does this this thing it's called an elvis operator because apparently it looks like elvis these are the two eyes and this is uh, the hair with the wavy thing i don't know the americans well, well, how they behave so say you have a nullable array of integers, int array, nullable is equal to int array of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then you have the value length, it's a normal integer, it's equal to, if array is not equal to null, let it be array.size, otherwise let it be minus 1. So what is length right now? It's 5, because array is not null. You can replace this statement with the following. Val length, also an int, is equal to array.size. First we have to escape the nullability here. And then you go Elvis operator minus 1. So what is length now? It's 5. To prove that this works, array is going to be a nullable int array and it's gonna start off as null then val length again is gonna be equal to array dot size otherwise minus one what is length gonna be right now is gonna be minus one so if it if if the if the left hand side is not null that's what you use otherwise you use the right hand side along with everything that goes on the right hand so to apply that here, x is not null, right? So if I run this, it's gonna be two, just like you saw with his program. Why is that? Because this is the Elvis operator that says, if the left-hand side is not null, use it. Otherwise, use all of this. This is the replacement for when x is null. x isn't null here, so it's just two. If you go like this, what's it gonna have now? Three, cause x is null. So take all of this stuff instead of X. And that's it for the video. They're done. Three nice Kotlin puzzlers. I'm going to do probably more of these. Let me know what you think of these. Let me know what you'd like to see. I hope you enjoyed it. I did. Learned a lot. I hope you did as well. See you in the next one.